Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 1st. Happy first day of meteorological spring to everybody who celebrates it. Taking a look here at the mid-level water vapor loop, our next system up here is mainly moving into California, but this will be spreading some precipitation back up across Oregon, trying to clip in Washington. And then we'll take a look at what is to come after that. It does look like we get active again here a bit in the future, but we'll take a look at what is to come here in some of the short range models as well in a moment. Now, if we take a closer view, you can see there is some fog there across some of the Puget Sound and the Willamette Valley, Oregon, Washington coast as well, but largely the entire Pacific Northwest is very clear otherwise. You can see a lot of the mountain snows out there and whatnot. There's Mount Rainier, for example, and then there's a system diving down again into California, but this will be spreading precipitation here as we go through tonight across portions of Oregon initially. And if you want a nice, affordable, fun home weather station, this one is awesome. Solar power, it's all wireless. It will be up and running in minutes from when you get it. And it's got a lightning detection system with it as well. Click on the link down below to save 10% off and help support the channel. Now, taking a look here, we we are now on March 1st. Sunset is at 5.54 p.m. But look by March 9th with the help of Daylight Savings Time. We are going to be having the sunsets after 7 p.m. And as we go towards the end of the month, over 7.30 there. So, yeah, the sun is going to be out later. That's very good for your mental health as well. So I do love this time of year when the days start getting longer and you can notice it. And uh, astronomical winter, astronomical spring. You see March 21st is when astronomical spring officially starts. Astronomical winter goes from uh, December 1st all the way towards February 28th. So we just eclipsed that. So nice little graphic there by the National Weather Service. And here we go for Seattle. Dense fog advisory is out. You can see that it goes all the way down towards Toledo. There's some beach hazard statements for sneaker waves. I would include that along the entire Washington coastline as well. And you can see Portland calling attention to that here Sunday, March or Saturday, March 1st and Sunday, March 2nd. Nice picture here kind of showing you when you're out messing around on the beach there. Sometimes these waves are way back. The sneaker waves can run way up with very little warning. And they don't always just approach you head on. I I've seen them come from the side and that in fact that's what the usual direction that I've seen sneaker waves come. All of a sudden the water will just look like it's a wave kind of gently coming up and then all of a sudden the surge of water just comes kind of from the side all the way down the beach. So watch out for that. It's not like you would expect and you just see a wave coming at you from head on. These sneaker waves will be just rushing at you from the side. I was actually, I've been out in a car and actually been caught in some of these as well. I'm lucky my car didn't get, you know, kind of stuck out there. But anyway, Back to the regular forecast here. Snowfall tonight through Sunday night. Again, the Saturday, March 1st, Medford, Oregon. You can see some of the higher terrain snowfall. you got to watch out for the Siskiyou Summit by late tonight. 4,000 feet could bring some snow down there for I-5. Crater Lake, 4 to 6. And you can see the percent chance of 4 inches or of snowfall or more. Crater Lake at about 62% there. And some of the Klamath Range and the Cascades there also. So taking a wider look at things, we got the Japan all the way to the left. There's Alaska. There's the Pacific Northwest to the right of the screen. 18,000 feet, 500 millibars, general ridge and trough position. That's cut off low is down across Southern California. This is the storm system moving into uh, Oregon and California. They're spreading that precipitation back north. So you see the troughing here, the ridging there, sinking air, usually warmer temperatures, higher pressure, lower pressure, trough, clouds, precipitation, cooler weather. And then as we scroll on in towards, uh, we're going into Monday morning here. We could have some precipitation still ongoing. Transient ridge, and then we have additional troughing setting up here as we go through next week. So this would be moving in on the day Tuesday. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. Another transient ridge here. Gulf of Alaska trough starts to get going. Deep trough down the west coast of North America. I have to watch this period for some windy conditions here across the Pacific Northwest. And you can see quite the active look there as we go on in through you know March 10th, 11th, 12th. So we'll be watching that one closely. Kind of a La Nina signature there with the ridging out over the Pacific Ocean, north of the Hawaiian Islands, south of the Aleutian Islands. That ridge axis is right here. And then it helps with that northwest flow, cooler conditions here across the Pacific Northwest. So definitely something to watch. As we scroll further in the future, you can see another deep trough at the very end of that with, again, that La Nina signature as we go on into the mid portion of March. Now, taking a look here, so this is the initial system. Well, the precipitation starts as we go through this afternoon for the Oregon coast, starts to move in the news. We go through tonight. You see some of that getting up into Washington as well with the general troughing here. Most of that activity into southern Oregon, California, and Nevada, however, but it will bring some mountain snows. You can see some of these showers continuing on through the day Monday. A little bit of a break before a more dynamic system here sets up off our coastline and brings some, a couple rounds of precipitation with it. And then we watch for this atmospheric river 
sure how much of this will be impacting Western BC versus Western Washington. And we'll continue to watch some of these lows spinning up off our coastline there for some breezy conditions. Potentially, uh, we're looking kind of far off in the forecast here. We're going way off into fantasy land. But you can see we do remain active absolutely through the mid portion of March. But look at the temperatures today. Well, uh, Seattle Metro, once you burn off there, you got some warm temperatures ahead. Same with the Willamette Valley. And a lot of the Willamette Valley actually has some pretty good sunshine going on right now. But a, a nice day here across Pacific Northwest. Get out there and enjoy that because look at tomorrow. Look at that, Saturday and Sunday. Big time switches coming up there. So if you're off across the backcountry there and you're out hiking, you're definitely going to notice the temperature change if you're out there tomorrow versus today. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe we'll warm up a, a hair by next week and we'll see how that goes. But as you can see, the best weather is today. Get out and enjoy it. Now, look at the 24-hour, 2-meter temperature change for Saturday versus Sunday. Look at that for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, Eastern Oregon as well. Seattle, you're going to feel that uh, temperature change coming up here also. So again, yeah, enjoy that while it lasts. Now, look at the North American model. Precipitation moving on, right? That's about 4 p.m. there. Southern Oregon coast. There's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, midnight right there. You can see the snow start to fly for the Oregon Cascades. A little bit of light precipitation moving up across the Washington Cascades as well, some of western Washington. And you can see we're going to get that round of snow as we go on in through tomorrow morning. Not much for the Cascades of Washington, at least initially here. But as we go through Monday morning, we're going to have kind of a convergent zone setting up here across the central sound. That'll be kind of interesting to watch. And then we get some of that snowfall. Some of that could be locally enhanced across some of the Cascades. Look at southeast Oregon, a nice round of snowfall, some of the Blue Mountains as well as that system continues to push through. And you can kind of see that down across the Seattle metro through Monday morning, that convergent zone activity. So if we take a look, um, that was the same map there, but I wanted to show you the winds at the time of that convergent zone. So as we go on into Monday morning, you'll see what happens here. Uh, convergent zone activity happens when you get the northwest winds. They wrap around the Olympic Mountains, and then the air runs into each other. It has nowhere to go but up, cools, condenses, and it forms that convergent zone here on the east portion of the Olympic Mountains. So again, as we go through Monday morning, you'll see this uh, south, or let's call it west-southwest wind there versus the westerlies coming here. And again, that wraps around uh, the Olympic Mountains, and it's going to be creating that convergent zone right there as we go through Monday morning. So a little convergent zone 101 for you. I actually have an educational video about that as well. Check it out in my educational playlist. So total snow, Couture ratio. Let's scroll through this on the European. You definitely, Oregon, you guys are getting the better amounts out of this with this system. Very small amounts across some of the southern Washington Cascades. Case. doesn't amount to much there and then as we go through next week eh, kind of hit and miss not a great snow pattern looking here through the next 144 hours as we go through the upcoming week better amounts across some of southeast oregon though and some of the higher terrain across idaho and you know at least there's some snow flying across the southern oregon cascades and if we take a look in turn at the snow depth in inches on the European model, so let's just pay attention, for example, the, the 108 there. I don't know if that, the 53 actually might be still calling me past, but we'll look at the 108. And we'll just kind of run through here. And you see as we go through Sunday, Monday, the snow depth in, the change in inches is going the wrong way there. So th that's not a great look. So there's the start of the run at 108, and there's the end by Thursday night at 98. And a lot of places here that I was looking around really aren't building much in the way of snowpack here over this next week. So I'm not too fond of that. But what can you do? Mother Nature's going to do what she wants to do. Seattle Tacoma International Airport. And again, there is today. <laughs> Get out there and enjoy that because you can see the, the cooler weather that's coming up here. And you can see that extend through mid March as these systems and that. That troughing that I showed you at the beginning of the video are going to be in effect here across the region. And then you can see that slow, arduous climb. And then look at this, maybe some early April shenanigans here as we warm up a little bit here. I mean, warm up is a relative term. You're getting back up into the 60s there. And if we're lucky, we'll get up towards 70 degrees at some portion in the first half of April. But again, way too far off in fantasy land. Just kind of showing you the extended run. And yeah, this is a kind of a false spring signal here. We've been dealing with it with the last few days. So we're definitely going to be in and out of cool weather here for the next month at least. So Seattle Tacoma International Airport, this is looking out 46 days as well. You can see, you know, the 100 ensemble members on the European weeklies show some pretty good precipitation amounts over the next 46 days, up towards 8 inches. The control run is much more robust above the uh, ensemble mean there as well. Now, looking at that, something off into the extended as well. So here we go, and I'm going to go all the way out towards mid-March because that was the active period. And you can clearly see the signal just continues to shine 
as we go every single model run day by day in the European extended. And so, yeah, th that signal is looking good. It's starting to show up in the, ter the, the deterministic runs as well. And yeah, so that's a cooler period as we go through <clears throat> March 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, on through the mid portion of March. So yeah, something interesting there. And you can kind of see this trophy hanging out over the Gulf of Alaska and Western Canada as we go towards the end of March. So yeah. Kind of a signal there as well. Uh, six to ten day, kind of a mixed bag across the Pacific Northwest. There's the six to ten day precipitation. Nice slice of above average there across some of the Pacific Northwest. Eight to fourteen day West Coast, big yin and yang versus the central portions of the USA. Eight to fourteen day as well. Look at that above average here all the way up the West Coast, North America as we go through March 14th. Um, but yeah, anyway, I will get this video out. Hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.